how do you not know? I mean, Ray Stevens was is obviously pulling some puss. This is Hoot and Holler, a podcast about the Ozarks. The end. <laughs> hey guys, how was everybody's week? Um, I, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> That was my big opener. How was how was everyone's week? week? I mean, okay, so <laughs> I, I I would say the two things we have to talk about before we get into our topics are, uh, what Harvey and and Pat have diagnosed as the Josh Holly problem. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we need to we we need to talk about Holly, and we also need to try to figure out between the three of us how to stop the steal. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at a, I'm at a loss on that one. <laughs> well, Arkansas's Attorney General, Leslie Rutledge, she, uh, she's trying real hard um, on, on Twitter. Uh, she signed a letter of support for the Texas <laughs> that the Texas <laughs> wild ass Supreme Court case that they tried to bring. Uh, she was very supportive of that. Um, and she's also just been going to a ton of parties and taking pictures with no masks. So I think in order to stop the steal, you have cool. to get COVID first. <laughs> right. Once, once you get it, you're just immune and then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You can go threaten to kill secretaries of states <laughs> without fear of getting COVID at that point. So I mean, it sounds like a win-win to me. <laughs> Who threatened to kill the Secretary of State? Oh, I mean, just like randos on Facebook. I think in like, was it like Georgia? They were threatening. Oh, oh okay. Like Wait, all they, of the election officials. They're, they, they've been threatening Brian Kemp and the, and the Secretary of State. They're threatening Republicans. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey guys, um, bad these, news. <laughs> it, it, it turns out that people that you have encouraged for, uh, the last uh, for your entire career did they understand the point of Frankenstein <laughs> it's almost like this is a bad Scooby Doo movie and Republicans are you know the mystery gang and they're like pulling off the hood of the villain and it's and it's just like people they've elected <laughs> it's, it's it's like the Spider-Man like uh pointing at each other a kind of thing like oh no it, it was me yeah that's what i was gonna <laughs> yeah. say the the spider man meme so well also we... uh how about that texit sorry um, you're breaking so, up a little bit there harvey so so i don't i am yeah I, i'm I really worried about if my I, connection if i sent this yeah i'm worried about everything <laughs> <laughs> if, if Same. Right. don't don't feel at peace currently about anything going on <laughs> I mostly mean my, my, my recording, but also just everything else. Okay, so I, I want to read this this thing that Milo, if anyone remembers Milo, who is now redundant <gasps> and no one cares about. <laughs> Did I send oh, this Josh, to you? I'm I so don't... glad you brought this up. So he said, if you are a, a Q believer, please kill yourself. Many thanks. And Patriot Mom on Parlor. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> How about we kill you instead? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, that's just how far it's gone with the monster they that they all created. You know, like is, they did this. And... This is so weird for Milo to surface out of the blue after years to come up with this. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Didn't he end up? I can't remember the name of an of the app. I mean, it was he was also banned from like Twitter and Facebook, but there was some other app that ended up banning him that like famously didn't ban ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> it's so 
Facebook. It's probably like Laura Loomer, where she's like, I have been banned by Uber. I have been banned by Lyft. And it's <laughs> it's it's that thing that uh I think it was unjustified that Timothy Allfans character says, like, if you meet an asshole at the start of the day, you met an asshole. But if you meet assholes all day, <laughs> you're the asshole. <laughs> yes. That's Laura, sweetie. That's you. <laughs> Laura Loomer is so scary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We should all be afraid of Laura Loomer. <laughs> <laughs> she was at the Stop the Steal rally uh, yesterday. Well, I saw the picture of her and uh, Caitlin Bennett together. Most, America's most banned women. I will say my life improved significantly when I like muted the words Caitlin Bennett and Gun Girl off of my Twitter timeline. Um, I highly recommend <laughs> yeah. it to anyone who's listening because she infuriates me to a level that I did not know was possible. I really don't support cyberbullying a lot of the times. <laughs> She's one of the very rare exceptions. I cannot stand her. Just something, just something, I just, it's about her, like, just her face. I just. The leftist gun girls are awful too, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Let's talk about Polly. Yeah, let's talk about Holly. Yeah, my only really contributions to the Holly discourse is that um, a lot of people who told me I absolutely had to vote for Biden um, or I was a traitor to this country um, are very pleased with Josh Holly this week on Facebook.com. So <laughs> the they're, they're, definitely, the they're definitely seeing the larger picture and they're getting the, the big idea. Um, and we're all doomed. So, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the problem. I, I want I want to say a thing where where so that 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 I'm wrong about that I I realize. So uh, Harvey did a really good thread, which you should read about the Holly problem, and uh. One thing you said was, and it's it's a thing I've said is like no he can't win because because he's he you know, like he just looks like an he's an idiot and he's like a robot. No, he can. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and you're right. I'm wrong. I'm completely wrong about this. And uh, I don't know. I'm very I'm very worried about what he could do to the country. And, and the world. And in the, uh, F. Mary Kill game, he, he is, he's, he's F, right? Oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> you want cotton? <laughs> that's, that's a, no. But, I mean, oh, no, I can't, no. I can't honestly think about, I, I think Harvey and I both had the same answer in that particular, that particular game. Which was, uh, I would rather just kill myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's un it's unwinnable. Yeah. Okay, I'm. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Did you did you drop yes. out for a second? I did drop out. I could still hear you, but um, then I disconnected. Um, what I what I left off on hearing was that, um, well, you were saying you were wrong, <laughs> but I mean. Um, yeah, I don't know. He, he, he just really scares me. And the reason is because liberals aren't going to have a problem with him. That's the biggest problem with him. Absolutely. Me? Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think they'll have problems with him on, on abortion. Yeah, I, that is so, true. Okay, so, but everyone is just like, well, maybe I'm sure with Holly, they'll just be like, well, maybe we can move him left on abortion, <laughs> you know? I, 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 we can push Josh Holly left. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new tagline for our podcast. We can push Josh Holly left. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to push Billy Long left over here. The thing with that is that people only care about abortion to a certain point because, um, I mean, Roe v. Wade 
is going to be overturned. It's just a matter of time now. And no one really cares. No one's burned anything down. No, you, for real, like, we we should... Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when uh, RBG, the notorious RBG... Who? <laughs> <laughs> um, died and people were saying, we... we we will burn this country down if they, if if they, you know, if they like put someone in the seat. <laughs> and and how did that how did that work out for the libs? <laughs> yeah, there um, was literally I mean, no as, opposition yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, like the it was ins- it was crazy to me how quickly people went went from being like we're gonna burn this place to the fucking ground to well. I'm sure it'll be right. fine. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, I have had less of an emotional reaction and needed more time to recover from when Walmart was out of Christmas tree cakes last week. Like, how are you not? <laughs> like, how, how do we just, I, I, I've, I've still never, we could do it a whole episode on the, on the discourse of the notorious RBG, but oh god, <laughs> I think it was was it Tom Sexton that said this was the day of online we'd long feared, <laughs> yeah, and he was yeah. correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and I, I will say, I, I, I all, I did lose my mind when she died because I realized uh, what they were going to do, and they did it, and they did it. A... Congrats, congrats on actually knowing how to win a, a, a thing that that liberals do not know how to do absolutely i have a friend who is a republican and literally i her body could not have been cold yet and he texted me and he was like hey just so you know like they're totally gonna push somebody through i was like yeah luke i, I kind of figured he's like well you know i just wanted to make sure he's, he's got <laughs> just a heads up just, just a quick heads up um you, you will have no bodily autonomy anymore very soon. Yeah, I was like, thanks, Luke. Really appreciate it, bud. But he was like, uh, you know, McConnell's just gonna ram somebody through. And I was like, yeah, bud. I, I kind of figured. And he's like, well, best of luck. I was like, thanks, man. <laughs> best of luck. <laughs> the only thing that Democrats did was boycott the vote when it didn't matter anyway whether they were there or not. And so they just did this symbolic right, gesture, yeah. <laughs> which did nothing. I mean, we we kind of had four straight years of symbolic gestures that meant nothing, right? That people like, yeah. Like I, th- the, I the think thing longer than four Pelosi years. Pelosi ripped but... up the no, no, <laughs> my entire life <laughs> since Roosevelt was president. Uh, yeah. Like the thing with Pelosi <laughs> ripping up the like speech after the State of the Union. Like, yeah. And I don't oh, know. Like God. if you. I don't know. If you think it looks cool, I, I don't know. Yes, queen. <laughs> the only people who liked that moment were the liberal girl boss babes from my hometown. They're like, yes, queen, <laughs> rip up that speech. We're going to be talking about liberal boss babes here in a little bit. This is all going to come together nicely. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I am now... Uh, I'm now seeing how long we've been recording, and we... So, okay. <laughs> We're making the same mistake we always do. Let's talk... So, can you talk about Josh Hawley? Well, I did a little bit of digging last night, and by digging, I mean I read the Wikipedia article. <laughs> um, so here that are some digging. things that, is dig- <laughs> that I learned about... <laughs> Here's some things that I learned about Josh Hawley. So, first of all... He identify he was raised Methodist, but he identifies as an evangelical Presbyterian. So there's that. Nonsense, That's right? His it's it, just vaguely Christian is what his Wikipedia should say. What I, what I need to say to make them like me. Yeah, as long yeah. as evangelical is in, that's the important thing. The Presbyterian I don't think matters very much. Does he have the gift of tongues? I need to know this. Does he have the gift of tongues? (laughs) 
My question is, I wonder if he actually is a believer or if this is just for... Just cynical. Which one is which? Which one is scarier to you? I don't know. Uh, Pat and I were talking about this uh, because someone like Brian Seitz is an absolute true believer, right? And I think someone like Holly is just using the label because it will get him votes. And which one is scarier? I don't know. What what is what is scarier? Uh, the person who is doing uh, the Margaret Atwood book to you that believes it versus a robot who just wants power. You know what I mean? Yeah, at that point, yeah, what does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) Here's some other things. Here's some other things that I found. Um, And I mentioned this in my Twitter thread that um, Holly worked on the legal counsel for the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty. And so it's a nonprofit that provides legal counsel for religious liberty cases. And they don't just do Christian cases. uh, Their founder said the goal is to protect religious liberties from A to Z, Anglican to Zoroastrian. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) they do take. (laughs) I I thought I was going to say from Anglican to Zionism. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But so that Hobby Lobby case that they did that, which was in the news a lot about um, a private company can deny health insurance to their employees on the basis of religious grounds if the health insurance provides contraception. And then another big case they did was the Hosanna Tabor. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. uh, V E E O C. And that one exempts religious institutions from anti-discrimination laws in hiring employees. So they're cool. (laughs) This, this, this ties into what I want to talk about as well. Everything. I mean, I've been freaking out (laughs) because just so many uh, connections have been firing in my brain researching all this stuff the past couple of days this next part though i find even more interesting he was a faculty member at the blackstone legal fellowship and his uh there was another faculty member there by the name of amy comey barrett oh wait can 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 you can you say it again but give her a cooler acronym oh sorry (laughs) (laughs) is she the notorious yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay so what this thing is it's a really competitive um, summer program for christian law students and um awesome <laughs> just <laughs> fuck, fucking awesome <laughs> oh great the next jd vance <laughs> yeah christian law students the purpose is to the purpose is to advocate um, train and fund issues on religious freedom, sanctity of life, and marriage and family. And they have, as of 2018, so this is a little bit out of date, but as of 2018, they have argued nine cases before the Supreme Court and they've won all of them. And um, okay, so the Southern Poverty Law Center designated them as an anti-LGBTQ hate group. But here is the part that I'm really freaking out about because they are funded by a nonprofit called the Alliance Defending Freedom Fund. And the donors who fund that are the Bolt House Foundation out of California the Bradley Foundation out of Wisconsin, the Prince Foundation out of Michigan, which is none other than Eric Prince, and the Richard and Helen DeVos Foundation, which is Amway Money, which is an MLM. So. <laughs> <laughs> God, you can't make this shit up. So there you go. 
all of all of this funding for that goes into funding these law these supreme court cases california wisconsin and michigan which one of those is a southern state <laughs> we get shit on for bringing the country down with our backwards ideas this is just such a horrible country <laughs> But look at where all of these billions of dollars to actually put these backwards ideas into law are coming from. Did I drop out again? You're kind of dropping in and out. Um, we can... Yeah. That, the, who are the last... Um, I think it's because of the snow. Bunch of Republican presidents. They're all... You know what I mean? Like, Reagan was California. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, George Bush is not a Texan. He is mm -hmm. a, a Northeastern. Yeah, yeah, His exactly. father is a, I mean, a CIA uh, spook from, from the Northeast as, as well. You know what I mean? Like, this, <laughs> it's all just. Yeah, these aren't like proud Southern families, you know? And Josh Hawley, Josh Hawley doesn't even live here. Yeah, it's, it's not. It, it, it's not someone yeah. rolling up from Alabama and be, it, it's not Roy Moore. <laughs> and I'm Republicans be brave and nominate Roy Moore and and Trump obviously he's just another from New York yeah. asshole from New York. But yeah, it's the it's the southern states that should need to <laughs> be their own country, which. <laughs> I love it when people when people want to try to be like, oh yeah, all these states should not be a part of the United States. I'm like, they tried that one okay. time. Um, <laughs> when was the last? I guess, I guess I guess Johnson was the last Southern president. Is that is is? Oh no, Clinton. Yeah, I think, I think you might. No. Be right. uh, oh wait, no, that he. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he wasn't a Republican. <laughs> Famously, not a Republican. <laughs> if if he had been a Republican, he would have been smart enough not to just uh, do some light adultery. He would have gone full force. Am I back? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Am I back in? You are. I, I'm super sorry that this. I don't know why it snowed. So. The internet's even uh, you worse. Can't, you can't can, control can your internet the, connection. We part understand. of the charm of this podcast can be that we are all living in areas that don't have <laughs> good internet. <laughs> Except we told you it was a rural <laughs> podcast. So. Except me, because I'm from the Midwest. I'm like some this other. This is what people. you get. <laughs> You're a city, a city slicker <laughs> in the Midwest. I'm ba this is basically the, the Williamsburg of. Uh, this area of the Ozarks. <laughs> Pretty much. Springfield is not the William. I'm Joshua. I'm the Brooklyn <laughs> podcaster here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if anybody's the Brooklyn podcaster, it's me. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah because a... you're, in, you're in Fayetteville. No. Yeah. 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 That, we have a slogan. It's, a, it's, it's called a hipper city. Fayetteville Funky. <laughs> Pat, I'm so is, sorry. Is, 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 you, is that the, is that the keep Austin weird that Fayetteville's trying to do? It is absolutely yes. The worst, the worst. <laughs> oh. Well, I think we got all we're gonna get out of Holly. <laughs> My point is, he's 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 trying to get everybody yeah, money, yeah. and so this is his whole. He doesn't give a shit. If you get the money or if you don't, that's not the purpose in trying to get the money. The uh -huh. purpose is yeah. just he does he does he does not care about us. Fuck him. It it is fine to you. We can use people to, and this is this is what I meant to say last week about uh, the expunging medical marijuana or uh, just marijuana records for people. Is if we can get an asshole like Josh Hawley to vote for that, that actually makes people's lives better. Uh -huh. And so we should do it, but also never forget that they see through who they are. 
and that they're they are cynical evil people and josh holly is especially evil Absolutely. in my opinion yeah i don't know holly's just a real big turd if you ask me yeah <laughs> yeah but there's a bunch yeah. of stuff that we'll have to be cut because me and taylor are talking about our other taylor <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, while I'm on... You, I love that I just... You honestly need to just hold, like, your laptop up to the ceiling. I, I don't know how internet works. Just hold it up to God. And... <laughs> <laughs> this is... God is punishing God us. God is punishing us for talking about religion this week. Oh. Because, because we're trying to destroy... We're trying to destroy him. I forgot. <laughs> yes. He knows. He knows I'm on my way. It's true. God is... I just realized now, heaven is for real. And it... <laughs> for kids, at least. And hell is a He's bad a internet connection. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's scared. Okay, so... <laughs> while I'm on, let's let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, who wants to go first this week? I can. I can go first. We want to switch it up. Yeah. You go. There. You I, go I, first. I think these will all fold into each other. I think so too. You go ahead, Taylor. Okay. Let me get my um, thing pulled up here. Okay. So for this week, we are talking about religion, and to kind of start us off, I wanted to do a history of something that has fascinated me which is snake handling. I know we've talked about <laughs> it in the uh, Discord. I I'm fascinated with snake handling and have been for like a hot sec. Snake handling, quite simply, is handling venomous snakes during religious ceremonies. And it's practiced ex almost exclusively in rural Pentecostal churches. Practitioners of this say ceremonies based in scripture. Scripture they reference is Mark 16, 18 which says they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Hmm. Now, snake handling so churches have a hell of a loop. Does that mean that I could drink um, just like a gallon of absinthe and it would not hurt me if I took up a snake? Yes, I believe that is what they mean. Okay, cool. But I think you have to have like a very sincere belief in God. But snake handling churches do have a hell of a loophole with these snakes and the practice in general. Basically, they believe if you handle snakes, the snakes won't bite you because of your faith in God. But if they do bite you, God's going to protect you from the venom and you won't die. But if you do die, it was just <laughs> simply your time to go and this was all in God's plan. <laughs> the, the perfect loophole that they always have. Yeah. yeah, they always... <laughs> exactly. I mean, honestly, I'm impressed. It's like the drowning a witch thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Now, the exact snake... The exact origins of snake handling are debated among scholars, but a lot of people point towards George Wendt Hensley as being the person who popularized the practice in the early 20th century. Now, guys, Hensley was a character... I don't have like a great place to put this in this little essay that I wrote about this, but it's important to note that Hensley was absolutely 100% a grifting scrub. <laughs> Hensley was married four times and fathered 13 children. <laughs> he had many conflicts. He had mm. a, uh, one second. He had many conflicts with his family members because of his drunkenness, frequent travels, and his inability to earn a steady income. All factors cited by his first three wives as reasons for their divorce. <laughs> I will now, say, while some, this feels relatable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he kind of sounds like someone I kind of want to hang out with because he's just <laughs> drunk and, like, fucking with snakes all the time. If we just <laughs> minus the God thing, it'd be great. <laughs> just popping babies into people over and over. He sounds cool. Oh, yeah, he's... It, Ray... Uh, Ray... <laughs> <laughs> something about Ray Stevens. Hensley <laughs> over here, he fucks. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Much, Much like, like Ray, Ray Stevens. Stevens. <laughs> now, while some say he invented the practice, most and those are mostly 
evangelicals in the small amount of remaining St. Canling churches. Most scholars agree that due to the media coverage and attendance of his snake handling sermons, he's responsible for spreading and popularizing the practices to the churches in Appalachia and the Southeast, but not responsible for the invention of the practice. But he is still a very important figure in the larger idea of snake handling. <laughs> um, as a little background, Hensley was born in Virginia in May of night, or excuse me, in May of 1881 and was raised as a Baptist. He experienced a religious conversion when he was around 29 years old, which, as we all know, is typically the time when you double down on religion. And he became <laughs> fixated on, <laughs> on that verse from Mark that we spoke about earlier. He was an illiterate traveling preacher who was quite frequently drunk. But people still <laughs> handle, people who still handle snakes in their religious ceremonies continue to view him as a great man, often, uh, one second, often dismissing his personal failures as slanderous gossip. That's, that, that's kind of similar to um, Joseph Smith, right? Where everyone just kind of... Did... Exactly. There's a lot of similarities here. Yes. Um, between, I, I think with any major, you know, scam political figure and him they believe his advocacy leadership and particularly his political or, excuse me his personal charisma i'm sure he had some great political views as well <laughs> were important factors in the advancement of the movement of serpent handling hensley spent most of his can you tell me what year we're in sorry um, so this is currently, um, it, when he experienced his political conversion, was around 1910. Okay. Do you, yeah. do, you, do you think it would be possible to start a religion now? I was going to say it's not, but... I mean, Man, I think it Scientology is, especially... Scientology popped off, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be talking okay, about okay, this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, let's... Let's not start a podcast. Let's start a religion. <laughs> no, listen, I'm down for that, too. I would love to have people worship me. It doesn't happen in my real life. <laughs> Can I make people worship my here? cat? Same. I understand, Josh. Um, uh, he was licensed. Uh, so Hensley spent most of his life traveling and grifting around handling snakes. He was licensed with the Church of God in Tennessee, which was an apostolic Pentecostal movement, in 1914, after his sister had to help him fill out the paperwork because he is illiterate. And he quickly <laughs> rose to prominence in the area with the snake handling revivals and often having his ministry mentioned in the Church of God newsletters. Now, while I would love to talk about his three marriages, we do have limited time today. I'm going to jump ahead. During 1922, he had to take a brief hiatus due to, quotations, trouble in the home, which might have been because he was arrested and sent to jail and then escaped from jail <laughs> for moonshining. <laughs> so that, that's pretty dope. No, he that's sounds cool. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that's cool as hell. Yeah. Now, he had to lay low, of course, because he was a fugitive. And while being a fugitive is, t is tough, by 1932, he was back at it again. In Virginia, 500 people attended an event, but all hell broke loose in a service when a young boy killed one of the snakes. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny to me. How did, how did he kill the snake? It. I actually looked for like a couple of days and I was never able to figure out how this, this kid killed the snake. Because a lot of these are from like a, a Wikipedia article, which then I kind of went down a, a rabbit hole, which then led me to another rabbit hole. So a lot of this is all, you know, like good Southern gossip, a lot of it. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. I do believe that that happened. I'm picturing just a kid lopping off the head of a snake. Yeah, honestly, it would be pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> now, in 1936, Hensley built a house on the back of a truck to drive to Florida to hold his <laughs> revival services. Florida is important. Uh, by March of 1936, he'd reached Tampa, where he drew over 100 people to a snake handling service. He traveled to Bartow, Florida, where over 700 people attended one of his tent meetings. 
He eventually made his way to Barrow County, Georgia in late April of 1936. During a, during a service here, a young man was bitten by a snake and became ill. Hensley spoke to reporters and claimed that the man was bitten because, and this is a quote, he was not ready for the demonstrations of the power. <laughs> he publicly said he was confident the man would survive, but I'm sure all three of us see exactly where this is going. Dude just straight up died. <laughs> now, what is more shocking to me is this is the first death by a snake bite to occur at one of Hensley's services and practices for uh, over 20 years at this point, besides his little stint of being a fugitive. In an amazing, fantastic mood, he actually led the services at that man's funeral, but then had to flee <laughs> town because people were so pissed at him. <laughs> He jumped around and uh, he jumped around the southeast in Appalachia, preaching and handling snakes. He was actually arrested on charges of snake handling, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but refused to pay the fines. And they were just like, okay, this is fine. Some people in his church got involved and he didn't have to pay them. Now, in early, and this man has 13 children. I think it's important to know this while he's gallivanting around the country. Now, in early July of 1955, Hensley began a series of meetings near Alpha, Florida. He conducted the meetings actually without snakes for three weeks before finding a five-foot snake, um, I believe was a rattlesnake from different sources that I've read, and he brought it to a Sunday afternoon service on July 24th. Several dozen people gathered at the abandoned blacksmith shop for the service. During the service, Hensley loudly delivered a sermon on the topic of faith, which is, I, I, once again, I know you know how this is going. He removed the snake from the... It, from I, I the, feel like it's going to go great for anyone who interacts with the snake. <laughs> yeah, it's it, fantastic. Um, he removed the snake from the lard can. It's going great for the snake. <laughs> yeah. From the lard can in which it was stored, he wrapped the snake around his neck and rubbed the snake on his face, which is... Stupid anyway. He walked around the audience while preaching and then returned the snake to the can. Now, can you guys imagine what happened when he returned the snake to the can? I feel like the snake would be fine with it and there would be no problems. Well, unfortunately, um, that is not true. <laughs> As he placed the snake in the can, it bit him on the wrist. After a few minutes, Hensley became visibly ill, experienced severe... <laughs> experiencing... <laughs> <laughs> severe pain <laughs> I know it's fucking hilarious <laughs> a discolored arm and he started vomiting blood like in the service now naturally he refused medical attention oh my god he refused medical attention because he believed God would take care of him but he was urged to seek treatments was urged to seek treatment by both the congregants and the sheriff who was just chilling I guess one churchgoer claimed that Hensley attributed his suffering to the congregation's lack of faith. <laughs> Although Hensley's current wife, Sally, stated that she believed it was the will of God, Hensley died the next morning. Oh, God. Aww. Calhoun County Judge Hannah Gaskin ruled his death a suicide. And Hensley was buried. <laughs> <laughs> and Hensley was buried two days later at a cemetery not too far from the blacksmith shop where he was bitten. What a sick burn. What a sick burn. This is my favorite part. After the funeral, some of the churchgoers met and declared their intention to continue handling snakes. Sally, who was, was his widow... Resolved to continue spreading her late husband's teachings, saying that after the incident, she had lost not an ounce of faith. <laughs> wow. Now, of course, Hensley's not the only snake handler to die at the fang of their own snake. <laughs> Due to the illegal and private nature of many snake handling churches, an exact number of how many people have died from snake bites during sermons is unknown. Ralph Hood, who is, he's a, he's a psychologist, he's a clinical psychologist who has extensively studied religion and religious practices and has especially studied snake handling, puts the number around, uh, puts the number right around 100 people. So I'm kind of inclined to, to believe that. 
He also notes the practice does not present a danger to observers. There's no documented cases of a non-handling member being bitten by a serpent handled by another believer. Kind of feels like that's just waiting to happen. Now, (laughs) after all that we've said, this can't be a surprise, but most states said, hard pass, no thank you, please stop this, to snake handling as soon as it started. This would have been in the, the, the 20s and 30s. In fact, most Appalachian states, except West Virginia, outlaw the practice outright. The states of Alabama, Kentucky, and Tennessee have passed laws against the use of venomous snakes or other reptiles that endanger the lives of others without a permit. Snake handling is, however, legal in the state of West Virginia, as the current state constitution does not allow any law to impede upon nor promote a religious practice. Uh Uh-huh. Now... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on the opposite end of that spectrum, <laughs> snake handling was made a felony punishable by death under Georgia law in 1941, wow. following the death of a seven-year-old from a, from a rattlesnake bite. However, oh. the punishment was so severe that juries would refuse to convict, and the law was repealed <laughs> in 1968, and I do believe they have a law currently like Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. The Kentucky law actually specifically mentions—excuse me—specifically mentions religious services. In Kentucky, snake handling is a misdemeanor and punishable by a fifty to one hundred dollar fine. Now, all these laws wow. are on the books. We know that they're rarely pursued or punished due to the small communities these typically happen in. Most of the time, and I'm sure that we all know this. Uh, most of the time, these law enforcements in like these little tiny towns are either no or are related to the people that are doing this crazy shit yeah now to finish to finish up i did want to f- I, I did want to end with a more uh, recent instance of snake handling and it's <laughs> uh, it, one, one of these motherfuckers or- killed ice cube i saw anaconda i know what this <laughs> next yeah the most famous semi-current instance of snake handling in the media is from the Coots family from Full Gospel Tabernacle in Jesus Jesus's name, that's the full name of the church, in Middleborough, Kentucky. This church was actually founded by the Coots family. Jamie Coots was a third generation snake handling evangelizer. <laughs> he was actually arrested in 2008 during an illegal snake ring bust called, and I'm not kidding, <laughs> twice shy (laughs) what (laughs) and he was actually arrested again in 2013 for transporting illegal snakes across state lines his church (laughs) yeah he actually had to make a a plea deal with prosecutors he did not get his snakes back but he has special sacramental boxes that they held the snakes in and he was able to plead guilty. I think he ended up getting, I, I didn't put this down, but it was like a year of unsupervised probation. And he was able to get his boxes back, but not the snakes. <laughs> now his unsupervised. church. No one knows what he's doing with snakes during that year. Exactly. His church and his family were actually made famous on a National Geographic reality show called Snake Salvation. And it's very funny. My dad and I don't agree on a lot of things. Uh, I've mentioned before he's a Fox News Republican. And just at the end of the day, we're two very different people. We actually watched the show together. I would go over to my parents' house so me and my dad could watch this together. Because my dad thinks it's ridiculous. Um, which was <laughs> actually, which it ended up actually documenting, documenting that 2013 arrest of Jamie Coots. <laughs> Man, Jamie Coots famously stated that and this is in quotations, handlers get bitten all the time, and every few years, somebody dies. Now, I'm sure you guys know where this this is going. Sometimes sometimes you just (laughs) die. It's just part of the game, Yeah, you know, sometimes you just just go to church and handle a (laughs) wild animal, and you just fucking die. Yeah. It happens to me all the time. Yeah, me too. Um, In 2014, Coots was bitten by a rattlesnake during the service. He fell to his knees, but continued the service. Mm -hmm. He was taken to his home, and when the paramedics showed up, his family refused help for him. 
saying it went against his religious beliefs. He died the next day at his home, which is very sad. Well, fuck around and find out. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, this can't be a shock that this happened, my man. The thing is, everyone that you've described is an actual true believer. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) And there's more. Oh, there's one more, unfortunately. His son, Cody Coots, which that's a terrible name. Thumbs down, yeah. Who was 21 at the time, took over the church until tragedy struck in 2018. And I have a hard time reading this sentence without laughing because it's kind of funny. And he was bitten on the face by the same snake that killed his father. (laughs) What? (laughs) That's beautiful. Yeah. And there's actually a dot and I can, we can post the, the link uh, if anybody wants it on our socials. Um, because there's actual video of this. They were filming another documentary, and they just kept rolling. Oh. <laughs> Cody requested to be brought to the mountaintop to be judged by God. But thankfully, fellow member of the church said, Jesus, take the wheel, and took him to the hospital, where he thankfully <laughs> made a full recovery. He does currently maintain his faith, and at the time of publication of the article I read, he said he would return to handling serpents. And at this time, there are around 10 snake handling churches that are known to be practicing in the United States. And I, I guess I wish them all the luck in the world. Um, <laughs> that's a brief history of snake handling. Um, it's, it, it is a bizarre... It's wild to me that anybody would would read that that verse and be like, Man, yeah, we should we should pick up some snakes. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me at all that it was started by a grifter. Yeah, and like I, I couldn't right, really go yeah, into yeah. it because, and I'll send you guys some of the research that I saw. But this dude, like, one time went to a like one of his revivals and like found a woman, like a widow with like ten kids, and just like married her and then like disappeared after a month. And then he married some other woman because <laughs> the, her family thought she was possessed, and it, and like her family That's like why he married her. He married her because he thought she was yeah, possessed. Yeah, because they they thought that <laughs> he could save her, <laughs> but she ended up leaving him. Imagine being so worthless that somebody who's possessed by like a demon or a spirit is like, "No, nah, dog, I'm I'm good. I'm going back home to my yeah. my parents." I mean, American history is just littered with people like this. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, when you were talking about this, the phrase in my mind was snake handling children's church. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm just imagining a children's church where they give all the kids snakes. I don't know, just a bunch of dead kids, basically. But. <laughs> Did either of you see that movie on Netflix mm-hmm. recently with um, Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson and their snake handlers in it? I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's really good. Uh, the The Devil All the Time? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 with Pattinson. Dude, that movie rips. Yeah. Pattinson's accent is out of this world <laughs> and not in a good way. <laughs> but that movie, oh my it's God. It's insane. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what no, he my was God. doing, I loved but I, I loved every minute of it. That's how I always feel about Robert Pattinson. Why did we watch Hillbilly Elegy and not Devil All the Time? <laughs> we can do that one for the next uh, <laughs> yeah. Discord watch party. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, Pattinson is. I, I I like him a lot. Same. Same. Well, that was really um, that was. That was fascinating. I the snake handling is uh, an American artifact. Absolutely, that's and, part of a um, larger problem. I think it's going to be my next bonus content. Ooh. Our next bonus content is each of us getting bitten by a snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, Joshua, did you um, did you go to church this morning? I did not. Okay, so uh, I I kind <laughs> of did because I went to church online. <laughs> oh, dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the last week in Springfield has been everyone. There were there was a night. Remember when? Uh, do you remember when Donald Trump got COVID? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I, 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 yes. Like, I feel like. I feel like people might remember this. I figured it, some someone on Twitter said it was the. It might have been the writer Ashley Feinberg said it, this was the only fun day we've had because it was just collective joy. <laughs> you know, like it. It was the last day I was happy. <laughs> but but. <Same. laughs> But I will say, the last week on Facebook, the worst website in the world that I only keep uh, an account on because of my bookstore, everyone has just been owning this church online over, everyone's just been mocking them. Oh, and so hard. They, they are our local mega church, and uh, they are evil for a lot of reasons. <laughs> I want to talk about now. Okay, so the the like the reason is that they have been having these like uh, like super spreader church events. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if anyone. I don't know if you guys have seen this at all, but it's like I I, I don't know what it is, but it's just like elves on. What is the capacity there? There there's no there's there's no capacity because the Supreme Court said. You can't stop people from going to church. Well, actually, that was a right. that was a Holly thing too. Holly Holly wrote to um, send a letter to William Barr about about that very thing. Um, but no, I meant what is the building capacity? Like, how many people oh, are there? Oh, okay. I might have it. I might have it on here. Uh, they're probably a couple thousand, probably. So they have four different churches. I'm sorry, campuses, which is what they call them. Because... Oh, dope, dope, dope. Oh, my. <laughs> it says they have a 17,000 uh, weekly attendance, which I know that's over the, that's over all their campuses, but Jesus. Well, and the th people travel from all over the area to come, too. It's not just the town it's in. It's people come from multiple counties to attend these services. It's, it's, uh, it's a thing where, uh, a, th a thing about mega churches. <laughs> 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 this is the thing where I'm kind of I, I think what what churches should be are communities. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. Yes. What mega churches are are not that. Like you're not establishing a community. This is we we actually just need to actually talk about first reformed, not a uh, uh, devil of the time. <laughs> 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 because because that's one that that's one of the things that that, that movie kind of discusses is how when these when these mega churches like get bigger and bigger they're not actually winning new souls for Christ they're taking people out of these small community churches mhm mm you know i think that I, I think that's right i don't know i'm making this up no but. yeah that's exactly no that's exactly right because people from rural counties come in to go to this mega church where they're not getting any sort of real fellowship they're getting a spectacle and 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 that's what i don't know if i can even explain this church <laughs> they had elves jumping on travel trampolines and people what? shooting like fireballs you know what i mean today <laughs> this morning no this was last week and then oh, everyone okay. got mad at them and so today they were a little bit less annoying but also pretty annoying elves jumping on um, trampolines yeah it, it makes no sense to me <laughs> what does that have How to do this? with the lord <laughs> that i don't remember this on the summer on the mountain is what i'll say <laughs> i i don't remember my man jc talking about this but it's it's all spectacle because american evangelicalism has nothing to do with christ or or any of that um and so okay so here's the first one, thing i want to talk about so in 2013 
we in Springfield, we had a non-discrimination ordinance passed, which I, I think we've been talked about before. But so it, it basically. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So it just said you can't discriminate on housing and employment. And here is his quote. So fuck this guy forever. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> he said, it's like if someone has a natural tendency to anger, they wouldn't be allowed to express that without restriction. And then he also. What? Uh, let's see. What does that let's have to do with anything? He, he, he also listed other tendencies such as greed, deceit, gambling, and chemical dependence. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, I mean, this is obvious that, that they just think that being gay is a sin, but like anger, <laughs> like gambling. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand his point at all. Not only is it is it you know evil. <laughs> that's the, okay, so that's the other. <laughs> not not a yoga retreat though. So so they also have a thing where they uh, have talked about how yoga is <laughs> against against God because it's like demonic or something yes like it's so bizarre but they also have <laughs> yoga events in their building do they really yes well it's called like stretch and wait what i looked this up the other it, it like stretch and uh lean or something like <laughs> oh, that oh so they're doing yoga and just not calling it yoga right yeah <laughs> it, do, do it without sinning i guess so <laughs> but but they did when so they they passed this ordinance in Springfield and like our city council did and then there was a huge like campaign to repeal it and these motherfuckers are the reason it didn't pass like it was it was a very close vote in the campaign Jesus. that the people against repeal ran was was, it was a very good campaign. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I had to drive by things about men will be in your daughter's bathrooms, like mm. every every morning, and them endorsing it. And it it, I, it was such a close vote. Like, it, I don't know. It was like fifty three forty seven or something like that in Springfield, which is a conservative place. That almost reminds me of. Uh, I'm trying to say here. We had a similar thing happen in Fayetteville. I actually didn't live here yet, but it, instead of it being a mega church that opposed the 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 bill, it was the the Duggars who sent out uh, some <laughs> robocalls calls about how it's it's always these goddamn Duggars. It's always the goddamn Duggars, or as they would say, the jawed damn. Right. <laughs> um, sorry, go ahead. No, I I I I don't know. It it it, it was probably the most upsetting thing i've ever seen <laughs> in spring do they preach uh, prosperity doctrine i don't know you know they do <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do have a quick question josh what like what denomination is shame through they, are they uh, so they're assemblies of god which is what my okay. my father is <laughs> and <laughs> um Dad, don't lift my fist. <laughs> um, but uh, it, they took, they used to be James River Assembly, but they took that out of the name. They have an excuse for why they did it. I think it was because they didn't want to be associated with it. Ah, um, uh, yes. Well, but yeah. Always a good sign. So, uh, so I, I watched their service this morning because I wanted to see if they were going to uh, apologize for having their super spreader thing last week. And it, it was it was a thing where I was like, I am going to fall into a trap of just going back to religion by seeing this <laughs> because it's so, like, ingrained in you as a kid. Yeah. You know what I like, um, Josh, I, I just want to say I do appreciate you watching this for content sake <laughs> and you wanted to come to us like having things to talk about but i'm also sorry because i know that that had to be like 
fucking traumatizing a little bit for you. So yeah, it really did. Please know that it is appreciated, <laughs> but also, it, you know, if you need to talk about it, please let us know. We don't, we don't want anything how, to happen to you. How are you feeling? No, yeah, I, I, we don't I want you to go watch, to... <laughs> I will not watch their shit next week. <laughs> okay. Um, and th- there was a point where I was kind of like vibing with it. <laughs> Where I was like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just all of that, like, comfortable stuff that you saw as a kid. Right. But the music pastor said, step out on faith and God will reward you bountifully when the offering plate was going around. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the motherfuckers are doing what it. What does that even mean? Oh, uh, give us your money and you, okay. you're rewarded tenfold. Yeah, get you get extra rubies in your crown in heaven. Uh dope, dope, dope. I prefer emeralds. Give us your money, money, and you'll get rich. So yeah, I, uh, because God wants you to be yeah, rich. I mean that I, it's prosperity gospel. Yeah, God, God wants me to have a jet plane, and He wants you to pay for it. And you like, and you can also it, have honestly, the jet plane someday if you pay for my jet plane. Some would say that is a pyramid scheme. Hmm, <laughs> you don't say. It, 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 it is. It 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 is it, <laughs> it. It is it is capitalism, right? Like it's just telling someone else you can be rich like me. You know what I mean? Like it's the like yeah. Jeff Bezos or whatever. It's. Like all the idiots who believe that, who defend someone like Jeff or Elon Musk, you know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Because one day I will be like Elon. Well, that's not. That's the. (laughs) That's all I can say. That's the entire (laughs) grift. That is the entire American grift. Is the the everyone is a temporarily embarrassed millionaire? (laughs) Exactly. So yeah, I I honestly don't know if if I don't know. Watching it felt like they were grifting, but I, I <laughs> but I but I didn't. I don't know. You know, like maybe they just believe this. Maybe they'll let the snake. They should handle some goddamn snakes. <laughs> Hold a snake, and then I will I will <laughs> give you my ten dollars. <laughs> Josh, if James River Church starts handling snakes, I'm gonna take us all on a group outing i'm gonna buy brunch for all of us and then we're going to church yeah, yeah. oh uh, i mean i'm Please sure no. you can buy brunch there i think there's like a f- food court inside or something <laughs> oh god you're probably they, right they have multiple like i don't think it's starbucks it's just like james river box i don't know i mean john but, but they yes yeah, of course of course they have a <laughs> A coffee shop. John Lindell should be held criminally negligent for but, the homicide of thousands of people because that's what's going to come out of these meetings. Hundreds, at least, people are I mean, going it, it, to it, die. You're absolutely it's, it's, right. It, and, yeah, I mean, it's evil. Oh my God. I, I don't know. And, uh, I want to read this one comment someone said <laughs> to me <laughs> that I I always claim that I'm not a troll who fights with people online. But... Okay. <laughs> okay, Josh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but so this person said, well, first of all, she claimed there were no cases of COVID at James River, but, but there literally <laughs> cool, have been. Cool. Okay. Our health department here in Springfield uh, pointed this out and there are 300,000 positive cases a day (laughs) of course there's cases there (laughs) yeah and there were cases back there in March you know (laughs) like why are they doing this like I I don't know (laughs) Uh, so she said why aren't you all bashing the people filling the bars I'm we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we are mad at them, too. We are. Yeah, yeah. don't worry. We're talking shit right. about them, too. We can have two opposing views in our head at the time. <laughs> um, but she said, so sad that you all will face, face judgment and it will be too late. And this is the quote 
that has just been on my mind all week. I will death be praying for your lost souls. <laughs> death. <laughs> death. <laughs> it's like saying, you're going to hell AF. <laughs> I say, yeah, I'll death do that at work as a joke for when like I'm, I'm not going to do something. <laughs> yeah, I'll death answer that email. Okay, yeah. And she she is going to be COVID positive I, AF. I just yeah. need someone to like post a, a thing where it's just like them looking at posting a nail emojis and saying, <laughs> me, <laughs> me, me seeing you in hell. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I don't know what, what they're doing over there, but it's not anything close to what I think Christ was up to. <laughs> not yeah, odd. that ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna go post on all the other thing. Oh God! So they on their uh, Christmas thing, they keep saying, "Let's get let's get some things you want in the chat." <laughs> like, this is a church. Why why are they telling us to get get the thumbs up going in the chat? <laughs> oh no! So they're doing like a they're trying to target so millennials. Sounds like yeah yeah hmm, interesting. I mean, I guess you got to get the next generation. And millennials aren't going to church. I mean, they're, I don't, they're going I mean, to come to mind they... my uh, snake handling children's church. <laughs> <laughs> Just because they couldn't afford abortions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad about that joke. Um, I, it is funny because I do know, and they're not going to listen to this podcast, um, I do know a couple of people around my age who went to the James River thing, the the Christmas blowout, and were like proudly not wearing masks during it. So I was like, "Yeah, there were yeah, there guys. were almost no masks in that crowd in the pictures that I saw." In the the ones yeah. that were were pulled down. Yeah, like, I... Dick knows. I mean, like, yeah, like just just you know just just be proud of it that you that you're not wearing a mask. Like it's it's fine. <laughs> It's not, but like it is what it is. Yeah. Well. Anyway, that's all. That's all I wanted to say about them. Uh, I do not like them. And my tummy just the, my yeah. tummy just grumbled <laughs> really loud. I hope that got picked up. Well, I have an exciting <laughs> opportunity to share with y'all. Oh, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm listening. Okay. I'm, I'm ready. To okay, write. so there's no. Josh and I need to get rich quick. It's, it's dire over here. Don't we all? Don't we all? Um, I'm not going to be able to say even close to everything I want to say about this because I'm working on like a grand unifying theory of MLMs and prosperity doctrine and how the United States is just a giant pyramid scheme. So uh, this is just I'm sure I'm going to be talking about this multiple times on the show. But let's talk about MLMs. Uh So what is an MLM, a multi-level marketing business, a.k.a. network marketing, direct sales? It all means the same thing. Um, It's a business model in which the revenue for the company comes from the non-salaried workforce's sale of products and services. So they don't have to pay anyone. Uh, Imagine, if you will, a pyramid. In which, uh, <laughs> in which, hey, hey, would, would, God damn it, would, Harvey! <laughs> would, would you say that my job would actually just be walking out to the mailbox and getting a check and taking it to the bank? Would that be my? If job? you work hard enough and you recruit enough people, Josh, that could be your life. And you could end okay, up. Okay. You <laughs> could end up making six figures a month. Oh, Ooh. damn. Okay. <laughs> so, pyramid schemes have they've existed for almost a hundred years, um, but they got really popular in the fifties and sixties, um, and they're a huge business today. And um, aren't pyramid schemes illegal? Yes, but um, I don't have <laughs> I don't have a really f- full grasp on why MLMs are legally able to operate, but it's because of Amway. 
It's because of a 1979 case where Amway was taken to court because of their terrible business practices. Amway being an MLM started by Richard DeVos, Betsy DeVos's father, father father-in-law and um, J Van Andel. And somehow they convinced the FTC that what they were doing was okay. And so other companies adopted what's called the Amway rule. And they just did whatever it was that Amway was doing. And so that is what is legal. But there's no actual regulations around it, just some suggestions. But no laws, no oversight. (laughs) And so today, Amway is the most profitable MLM in the world. Um, It makes about a hundred and eighty billion worldwide every year. Did you say billion with a B? Billion with a B, and that's just Amway. Jesus. Yeah. So we all know MLMs, right? Um, Lularoe, Unique, Beachbody, Limelight. We 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 all know, and if you're a woman you know even more. <laughs> Every Everyone you went to high school with has tried to sell you something at some point. And so this is hashtag girl boss, boss babes. And so you see <laughs> a lot of things you see are a lot of tactics they try to get to grow their downline are... You have to make people think that you're successful, right? So they put out these outrageous claims like, I can make six six figures a month <laughs> selling these keychains. <laughs> and um, there's a lot of language about being an entrepreneur and owning their own business, even though they don't own the business <laughs> at all. <laughs> They also make a big deal. I, I, I didn't say this earlier about the woman I was fighting with on uh, <laughs> about James River, <laughs> but in her like like in her bio, it was CEO at <laughs> you know what I mean. Like it was an MLM scam. Yes, that they they often put CEO in their bio, mom 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 entrepreneur. <laughs> Which is just awkward to say. Like, even though technically I own a bookstore, like, I would be so ashamed. Like, I'd be so embarrassed <laughs> to, to to be, like, owner at Bookmark. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, it's a weird thing to say. And uh, another thing that I see a lot that they do is they'll buy gas or they'll buy coffee and they'll put up their company card and be like, I paid for this with my earnings from my (laughs) LuLaRoe business. And it's like, yeah, that's what you typically do with money you earn from your job. I'm just going to start doing that all the time. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a unique thing. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But projecting wealth is an important part. Of the scam. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, do you want to guess how many people, how the percentage of people who lose money in direct marketing? I'm going to guess 91%. I was going to guess 95%. So uh, my sister did sell a bunch of her Mary Kay stuff at a garage sale for a (laughs) dollar each. So. So, so I'm guessing it's pretty low. Maybe that moved her into the 1% of people who make money in direct marketing because 99% of people lose money and oftentimes in the thousands of dollars. Oh my God. I can't imagine losing all that money for fucking like Avon makeup. <laughs> Exactly. For like, leggings with holes in them. <laughs> oh my god, those fucking LuLaRoe leggings. Ugh. You, you don't want to uh, lose 
every dollar you've ever made selling CBD gummies. Not only do you lose all of your money, <laughs> but you lose most of your friends. Like <laughs> they, because they, they hate you. Absolutely. Like it. Yes. I literally have sent messages of myself, sc- like a voice memo of myself screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah to people trying to sell me stuff i've sent voice memos of me screaming <laughs> that's a good way to handle it <laughs> they'll never uh hey hon hey hon how are you doing ah! hey haven't haven't seen you since <laughs> since high school but would would you want to uh, send me 40 dollars a month for <laughs> You what? Whatever dumb shit I'm trying to sell you. <laughs> okay, okay. This brings me to my next point. MLMs are a feminist issue. Seventy-five percent of direct sellers are women. Ninety-two yeah, percent of in-home sales parties are thrown by women, and it is. It's very, very easy to make fun of hashtag girl boss, <laughs> boss babe. <laughs> but let's think about why a woman might be drawn into a scheme that promises some sort of empowerment. And it's it's a very liberal form of empowerment, you know, mm-hmm. more female billionaires. <laughs> yeah. It's the liberal <laughs> optics. You got to put the claps in. You have to. Harvey, you have to put the claps in when you do it. More female billionaires. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and so it's such a liberal form of empowerment. It's optics only. You know, you you are not a CEO. You are not an entrepreneur. You're losing thousands of dollars. That's not empowering you. You're not gaining any power. And not only that, but the top. MLMs have male CEOs. So the people who are actually (laughs) getting very wealthy from this are men. (laughs) And so, you know, why would a woman be drawn to this to, to find some empowerment? And I mean, let's talk about the wealth gap between men and women, because it's not just getting paid less even though we do get paid less than men. But it's a generational wealth gap. It's women who have lost money because they are kept home with the children. And when they enter the workforce, they have no work experience. It's women not being able, um, not being allowed to work while pregnant. It's women not being allowed to enter certain occupations. It's women not being allowed to get an education. Women couldn't get a credit card until 1974. All the women who have been forced out of a job because of sexual harassment, it's a generational wealth gap. And so MLMs move in and they target stay-at-home moms, caregivers, um, people who are looking for some sense of community, which these MLMs offer. And I think I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, you know, disabled people often get into this because if you can't leave the house to work, this seems like a great opportunity. Immigrants are another community that are target targeted by these scams. So, yeah, I, I think it's a feminist issue. Yeah, no, completely. Uh, anyone want to guess what the capital, the MLM capital is? Oh, uh, I'm gonna guess somewhere in California. Where the most MLMs are headquartered? Oh, Utah, Utah, Utah. It's definitely Utah. Yes. Yep. It's Utah. <laughs> there are yep. more than a hundred MLMs he- headquartered in uh, Utah, and forty-six fi- uh, percent you, 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 of working-age women in Utah are not working because you have what oh. I will refer to as kept women. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's exactly it. It makes, when you think about, it makes sense that that's, the the culture breeds this opportunity for all of these MLMs to be headquartered there. But not only the culture, the um, 
the pyramid scheme safe harbor legislation that Utah passed probably has something to do with it too. And I have in my notes bookmarked for later (laughs) because that's a whole other rabbit hole to fall down. (laughs) And um, so the Mormon church has almost a hundred thousand missionaries worldwide and they come home and they speak a second language And so I think this plays a big part into how MLMs are becoming global. It's we are exporting this problem. Uh Were you going to say something, Josh? Well, I was going to say, do you think that um, ties into why this has been a big thing for like immigrant communities is that they can. Um, Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hmm. Yeah. Mormons do better, please. Um, Herbalife is a big one in the in the immigrant community. Yeah, Herbalife got in there, and I mean these. I mean, I don't know. I watched a documentary. I can't remember the name of the documentary, but it was specifically about Herbalife. But um, they interviewed a group of immigrants who were, I think, bringing a lawsuit against Herbalife. It was interesting. Um, okay. So why do I bring up MLMs in relation to religion? And for me, this all comes back to the prosperity doctrine, which is a sect of evangelical Christianity. Um, And the theology is that the will of God is to, for his followers to have material abundance. They literally are preaching that God wants you to be material, materially wealthy and that through faith and sacrifice, you can become financially prosperous. Mm-hmm. And the sacrifice is, of course, giving your money to the church. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 17% of all Americans identify themselves as an adherent to prosperity gospel and 61 percent of americans believe that god wishes for his followers to have material wealth and so some popular uh pastors are oral roberts joel osteen yeah joel our, my man joel uh, jo- <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think Joel is probably the biggest, uh, or at least the most well-known. There's also Creflo Dollar, which... What? <laughs> but uh, Joel Osteen is worth about $100 million. And his church has 52,000 attendees every week. And then an additional $7 million, uh, via television. Do you remember when uh, th- when there was the was it flooding down in Houston? Is that where he's from, Houston? Yes, yes, and, yes. Uh, and uh-huh. uh, people asked him to open up his church to let people stay there, and <laughs> he was just like, "No, <sighs> no." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just I don't know. It's. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's it's just evil. so obvious. It is. It's yeah. uh, it's just so obvious that he has nothing to do with Christ. <laughs> yeah, I, but a thing a thing I do want to say is I have no animosity towards like anyone who has like faith or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, and this is this is the thing we'll talk about a lot. I'm sure on this podcast, these people, as you said, are not it. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I mean, it's like going back to the boss babe thing and with uh, Christians in general, it's not, it's funny to laugh at them, but let's attack the underlying structure that is making this possible. (laughs) Yes, yes. But the the parallels I see... It's people's lives and uh, the, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's causing material harm. And, uh, it's yes, causing it really material is. harm. I mean, it, it, well, it, and it, I it's think... what... 
the I think the connection you're making is the right one, which I guess I hadn't thought about. Like the connection between MLMs and capitalism in America is the problem, right? Well, I mean, I think it's it's holding up a mirror to American society kind of I don't know. This this is part of my theory that I'm working on. Like general religious belief is on decline while um a religious extremism is on the rise. I don't know. This people people in economic distress are going to look for a way out whether they are joining an MLM because they've been told that they will become a millionaire or whether they are joining a mega church to learn about the prosperity doctrine because they believe that their reward will be in heaven people in economic distress are are looking for something and these are two scams which aren't going to help them out and in fact cause more harm but and okay so this is another thing that uh amway is a cult M multiple people have just said that amway is a cult they they hold these conventions and other oh, mlms yeah. do this too most mlms do this where i mean you know people are crying <laughs> People are, they do the, the fire walks where they have to walk across hot coals and shit. I don't know. But that's a whole <laughs> other topic to go down. But, I mean, there's two things between cults and MLMs that they use the same tactics where uh, there's love bombing, you know, where they really gas you up and and tell you how amazing you are and, and you're going to do so well and they promise this fantasy world but then if you don't do well then you're shamed <laughs> and if you raise any questions that is not allowed you are not allowed to question the leader um, and then there's also the evangelizing because the church needs more members so the pastor can get richer and the company needs more members so the CEO can get richer. So both require evangelizing. So I just I just see a lot of parallels between prosperity doctrine and MLMs and I'm trying to work up a theory where I tie that all together. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it, it's almost a little uncanny how um how similar they are and it's kind of gross there's also the american individualism plays a big role in both which i think american individualism is a really serious problem <laughs> that we need to parse out at some point mm -hmm. but yeah okay that's what i've got no. Uh, there's all. I mean, we could, I, we could get into Tony Tony I, Robbins I, and life coaching no. and the secret. I was about to bring up Tony that. Robbins. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I'll, Tony Robbins. He doesn't have an MLM. He's just a life coach guy. Which, and this is a whole other topic. But I mean, I see a lot of women who are done with MLMs. They they were direct sellers at one point and now they've moved on to the tony robbins model of just selling the secret <laughs> yeah 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 or, or or you're a man who goes to the um have you seen magnolia everyone yeah the movie like, yes it's will, been a long will time, you go to yeah. the frank tj mackey thing because you don't want to feel alone and someone is like showing you not how to feel that way kind of thing. Like, uh, yeah, there's always people who will try to sell you something. And I, 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 I think it's mostly that just people feel like lonely a lot of the time or, or poor. I mean, this goes back to whatever. what we were talking about in your segment is that, I mean, everyone is seeking desperately some sort of community. 
and yeah. uh -huh. the mega churches offer that. How could you feel alone in a room with seven thousand other people? But if, if you got, if, if you, if you have to give, if 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 we do a thing where I say everyone give someone a, a handshake before we do a love offering to God, <laughs> yeah, that, what, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and, it's, and it's, MLMs offer the same type of community, you know? You get to be part of the girl gang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a thing that I, I completely understand the appeal. But, it, again, and it's And it's evil. all, I mean, it obviously all falls under capitalism is the big umbrella. But I think there's a lot to say. I'm... America has such a grift problem. We have a grift and a cult problem that we have not yep. reconciled. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And it's what makes our brand of capitalism specifically very bad. Yeah, I I mostly agree with Patriot Mom coming up in uh, my <laughs> in Milo's uh, <laughs> comment section. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It, it it all makes me sad because it's all a thing that takes advantage of people who uh, just w want something from life, and it's just someone saying, "How can I take advantage of them?" Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely. And it's I mean the same thing with any other cult. If you talk to someone who's selling in an MLM. And you're like, hey, this might be a bad idea. They're going to get very defensive. And, and you know, they have a whole spiel of things, that a whole script that they have to uh, refute these arguments. You know, like, oh, well, you work for the man <laughs> or whatever. But but it's that it's that cult thing. And, and that's the thing is, like, you know, sometimes you feel bad for people who are kind of stuck in this, like, oh, I like I have to make this work like I have to make this MLM work like this was my you know I, I had a huge a huge startup cost and I have to make this business of mine that they think is well they think is theirs I have to make this work and it's just like man this ain't it I'm CEO at 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 Taylor dot net yeah <laughs> Whatever, you know I mean? exactly it's like damn like I, I feel bad that you put all of your money into this but man you, you should have been smart enough to kind of see this on the outset that this wasn't gonna be it, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it on it honestly makes me really sad when I see yeah. it. Because, Unless it's somebody uh, that I hated in high school, and then I'm like, mm, you suck. Oh you god, yeah. Sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to. I, I don't know if I've sent this to you ever. I have to send you my junior high bullies uh, Facebook or. or uh, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, the, it his profile picture when he put a Confederate flag over it. <laughs> oh no! And he used to just like punch me in the back of the head every time. Oh, no. <laughs> in, in in eighth grade. Oh. <laughs> oh, one thing I wanted to say that I forgot to say was that also that the products that these MLMs sell just suck. They just suck ass. <laughs> They're awful. One time I felt bad. You <laughs> and bought a like a, what was it like, an eyeshadow palette from somebody who was selling Mary Kay, and I just threw it away. I was like, "This is fucking useless." <laughs> I, I, Unique I makeup claim... is the worst makeup of all time. It's horrible. It gives you a rash. Um, Rodan and seen... Fields makes your hair fall out. Oh God, I have seen Unique. What they call themselves was like presenters. I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. I have. I have seen themselves do their makeups and do their own makeup. And here's the thing. I am not a makeup artist by any means. I barely can do my makeup when I go to work on the mornings. But I'm like, and if somebody like me can be like, damn girl, that's bad. Don't post that on the <laughs> internet. You know that it has to be super, it has to be very, very bad. <laughs> and, and then like, they of look course like they have like little spider legs like a when they use that crazy ass oh mascara yeah because they have they, they, have, they have, that, have spider legs they have that crazy mascara the magnetic whatever oh yeah. it's horrible and the lularoe yeah. leggings are just 
ungodly. <laughs> are are they are they like racist or something? Probably. Or is that Lululemon? I think no, it's no, no. Like one of those. You're thinking of something else. <laughs> That's like a high okay. high end brand of <laughs> leggings. And then Lularoe is the Mormon MLM. But I one time bought a pencil skirt when I first started working in offices from somebody and I didn't realize it was an MLM because they were very chill about it. And I bought this pencil skirt and it did fit really well, which as, you know, as a bigger (laughs) woman is a blessing. And I'm like, oh, this is great. And then like two weeks later, this person messaged me on Facebook so incessantly that I had to block them all over a pencil skirt. (laughs) That I paid like thirty dollars for. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is that these leggings are like forty five dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. And I, I mean, it's no surprise that all of these businesses are owned by Christians. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know that I know right. somebody who You're is right. very far into MLMs who isn't also like deeply religious. They, they, they're just easy targets. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I, I guess it's the thing that, that you were saying, uh, uh, when we talk about Utah is that you're preying upon people who typically are women who are at home because that is kind of what uh, has been ingrained into their mind of you know what I oh, mean. Oh, I, I mean like, from being raised Mormon, it my fate in life was to to stay home with children. That's what I was told that I would do. There was no other option. Your fate in life was to be a Branson star, and <laughs> and I I cannot <laughs> wait to discuss this more. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, get a Branson show for content. I would love that yeah. personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, no. Every, everything that we've been talking about are things that I I know we'll talk about a lot more because <laughs> it's probably mm-hmm. all of our trauma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think we've just barely scratched the surface, but they all fit together. You know, all of these all of these things fit together. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The, the the thing you were talking about MLMs and the way it in, engages with uh, Christianity and capitalism, I was like, oh, I I hadn't put that together, but it's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's you're you're completely right. Sometimes I'm right. <laughs> I'm 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 a person who's rarely right. <laughs> so yeah. Well, this has been a pretty tortured episode. <laughs> I feel so sorry for Pat. I I feel like have you seen the movie Wanted? He is going to do the Wanted bullet that can go through different people's heads and shoot all of us for this. <laughs> Not going Listen, to Pat, we tried our best, sweetheart. <laughs> um, I believe it's in the you. snow. You're doing great. This this is our best. The snow is <laughs> One day we will all be able to record together because COVID will not take over our lives, and until then we will just have to we just have to make do, and that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're doing our best. Yeah, we're yeah <laughs> exactly. We we are doing our best, <laughs> and our best we're is, not um is, is okay. <laughs> We're not starting a pyramid scheme and scamming people out of millions of dollars, so can we? Yeah, exactly. Can we? Can we figure out how We're to? We're doing though? good. <laughs> oh wait, I I actually want to talk about a pyramid scheme really quick. Okay. Which, okay. which I think I which I think I told you about. Uh, in when I would uh, started college, my freshman roommate was involved in a pyramid scheme and it was to get <laughs> landlines. <laughs> this was I forgot about this. Yeah. John, sweetheart. What? No, you're aging yourself. This 
This what, was to in, get landlines? This was in 2000 or 2001. I'm trying to remember the first year. 2001. Yeah. It, it was the thing where he tried to explain to me, like, <laughs> we need landlines. And he had fallen into this scheme. And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think there's these things called cell phones, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and and he said the thing to me he was like all you have to do is walk out and get that check all right that's a wrap for us this week hooters and hollers um had a little technical issues there it snowed last weekend and uh well one of the fun things about making a rural podcast or a podcast that at least a, a part of its component focuses on rural issues and rural life is, well, you get to deal with all the fun things that come along with that, including having your uh, whopping five megabyte uh, download speeds drop to, you know, about a megabyte per second, if you're lucky, and uh, more like dial-up speeds <laughs> at other times. So apologize if there's a little bit disjointed in there. I think I cut it together all right. Uh Feel free to let me know I didn't. Literally, I if you if you got any tips, good God, I'm just pissing in the wind over here. This is not uh, audio production. It's not something that I do professionally. Well, <laughs> if you feel so moved, uh, if you like what you hear, you want to help us stay independent. Well, we got our own little grift going on over at Patreon. That's uh, Patreon.com/slash Hoot and Holler Pod. And uh, every month we publish one bonus episode. We got a hot one coming uh, this month where we talk about Ray Stevens for, well, you'll never want to hear about Ray Stevens again after we're done talking about him. Um, uh, We also publish uh, individual bonus content weekly. Joshua told us a couple weeks ago about how he learned about sex. Uh, Last week I published a squirrel gravy recipe that, got about as dark as a squirrel gravy recipe possibly could or really any recipe you can join up for just starting at a buck a month and all that helps uh, keep this thing sustainable and independent we don't want to run ads you don't want to hear us read ads podcast ads suck so well you can find us on all the socials at hoot and holler pod i don't know why you'd want to do that but you can say some dumb shit on twitter and call tom cotton a bitch um, stay up to date on episodes and get some pictures of stuff we're talking about and the like, you know, whatever. We're on all of them at Hoot and Holler Pod. And uh, if you want to help us out non monetarily, uh, you could subscribe, you can rate, review, tell a friend, get us in some more ears is the best way to help us out. Some old friends started a podcast that they think is pretty niche but if you have opinions about bob dylan at all uh, whether you like him or you hate him i think you may find uh, some interest in the bad dylan podcast they're diving into all of dylan's records from the 80s and 90s his real butt rock period and i think he had like a christian rock thing going on in there too the uh, first episode just dropped this week uh, it's about Down in the Groove, um, which is an exceptionally bad album. Funny dudes, old friends, uh, check it out if you're interested in that kind of thing. And before I send you to this week's song, I've got one more announcement. Uh, this weekend, December 19th, Saturday, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., a collective of local activists, organizers, socialist organization members called the Southwest Missouri Solidarity Network is putting on a free brake light clinic. We're going to be swapping out brake lights for members of the community. First come, first serve. It's all free. We'll have some light refreshments. All you got to do is sign a little liability waiver. Um, We can help you avoid an interaction with the cop as we're in these long dark nights now uh, in missouri well it only takes a couple bucks to change the brake light but in missouri the citation from that can cost over a hundred dollars and if you don't pay it or fail to appear 
you can get a bench warrant, which of course could lead to all kinds of bad things down the line, including jail time, lost work, violence at the hands of the carceral state, you name it. It's the kind of thing that adds up, turns into a big problem, and this is an easy way for us to help out our neighbors and try to avoid that unwanted interaction with a police officer so if you would like a broken brake light tail light uh maybe a turn signal we'll kind of have to play that one by ear but come on by and see us we'll be at the corner of grant and college just west of downtown springfield it's in the mother's uh, brewing parking lot there again that's about 1 p.m to 5 p.m around dark and we'd uh, love to meet you. We're looking for volunteers as well. We need warm bodies to help in a number of roles. And if you're interested in coming and hanging out and doing some good uh, outside of the framework of NGOs or Christian charity, well, then come join your comrades, including myself and Harvey, at the Mother's Parking Lot. December 19th, Saturday, 1 to 5 p.m. Love to have you. Like to volunteer, go ahead and holler at Harvey on Twitter. That's at Harvey the Haint. Or you can holler at me at Woke Nat Kenny. Bonus points if you catch that reference. I think that's all I got. I'm sure I'm fucking missing something. Anyways, this week I got a banger for you. Just a wonderfully weird little song that has been getting stuck in my head for a decade. From some good friends, uh, Toxic Teeth. The track's called Warm Wind Day. It's off their 2010 release, Precedence Day. Uh, it's a real weird album, some real weird dudes. Uh, that said, it's a very good album, very good song, very good dudes. So, if you want to check them out, you can check them out at toxicteeth.bandcamp.com. Here's a warm wind day. Thanks for coming through. We'll talk to you next week.
Oh, oh, oh.